I tell you the truth you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices you will grieve but your grief will turn to joy a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come but when her baby is born she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world so with you now is your time of grief but i will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy shall we pray father in heaven we come to you lord once again we thank you for your word that we have read that you have given to us the heavenly manna that you have given to us now speak to us lord minister to us lord lord we pray that our grief will be turned to joy our sorrow our mourning will be turned into dancing we pray that every one of us will receive your word and your word will come lord into reality in our lives we pray for the full lord expression lord and the manifestation of the power of your word let your name be glorified in jesus name we pray amen john 16 we read verse 20 to 22 now jesus is saying here before he was being uh, taken to be crucified just a little before that and uh, speaking about his own death and what he has come here to do he speaks and he says to his disciples i tell you the truth you will weep and mourn while the world is rejoicing now when jesus is going to be arrested taken captive and uh, uh, you know the whole world and those who crucified him are going to rejoice and he says you will weep and mourn while the world is rejoicing you will grieve but your grief will be turned to joy and he gives a comparison of a woman giving birth to a child and he says when she uh, is giving birth to a child she has pain because her time to give birth has come but when her baby is born she instantaneously forgets the anguish and the suffering and the pain and she begins to rejoice why because of the joy that she has in in carrying taking the uh, the child that she has given birth to when she sees the face of the child she forgets everything all the suffering that she has endured for a long time all the waiting that she has endured for a long time all the uh, weakness that she had borne for a long time everything is forgotten and she has fully recovered from the pain and the sorrow and the grief and the you know suffering that she has been through she completely forgets everything and uh, she begins to smile and rejoice and everybody begins to rejoice everybody begins to celebrate and uh, uh, even the you know the hospital nurses receive sweets that morning and you know everybody is rejoicing the whole family celebrates and everybody comes from the north south and the east and the west to come visit that baby and the mother is rejoicing uh, so proud that uh, she has brought forth her child to this world that's how jesus is comparing to say how our grief our sorrow will be turned into joy amen hallelujah god is able to cause us to fully recover from everything that we have been through god is able to cause us to fully recover from everything that we go through sometimes you know even the uh, worst sit- situations may not change but you can recover from what you have been through hallelujah amen circumstances may not change people may not change but you can recover from the suffering and the pain that you have undergone in your life hallelujah and that is what god wants to do in your life it is not the will of god that you should live under grief and sorrow and disappointment and discouragement all the time it is not the will of god that we should always be contemplating about the sad things that have happened to us the hurt and the pain that we have been through the sorrow the sufferings the 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 the, the lack uh, that we have been through the limitations the setbacks that we have endured we heard a beautiful testimony of how um 
you know although all through his life uh, the father of sister jaya has lived you know as a non christian but at the end of his life he has accepted the lord jesus and that gives great peace if you heard her testimony carefully she said you know there is a great peace that i had she said although uh, there is a grief and sorrow that we go through when a loved one passes away from us but yet there is a great peace in the midst of that there is a great hope in the midst of that what is that that we will see him once again hallelujah we will see our loved ones once again that is what gives us that is what makes us to recover that is what helps us to overcome the the grief otherwise there is no way anybody can recover from such a grief from a loss of a loved one there is no way because that cannot be replaced if you lost your house you lost your income you can earn some more money and you can find a better job and 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 get something you know replace it if you lose material things you can always get them back but once you lose uh, certain things that are irreversible it is impossible to get them back but the good news this morning is that you can recover from that hallelujah you may not get what you lost but you can recover and live a joyful life once again that is what makes a difference with jesus hallelujah that's what makes a difference with the christian faith we do not give in and totally give up to faith and karma but we say there is hope hallelujah and god gives us strength and the grace to recover from everything that we have undergone god wants you to recover he does not want you to perennially live as victims wounded and 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 uh, gone through pain and suffering and to live a wounded life all the all the time all through your life he wants you to recover once again amen this morning we should title this morning's message it says you can recover from this you could recover from this and and maybe we could give you a, a fill in the blank next to that and say you fill in what you want to write and and maybe you want to make it personal if you're taking notes you could write it as i can recover from this and fill what you want to write amen make a prophetic writing and that will come to pass amen the prophets not only prophesy they also wrote amen and when they wrote it came to pass and when those who read it they read it and prayed over it and they believed it and it came to pass why don't you write this morning if you are taking notes i can recover from this and write what you want to write and what you've been suffering from what you've undergone write that and say i can recover from this hallelujah do you believe that do you believe that god is able to help you to recover from whatever you've been through amen we may not have the strength in us but god will help us to recover he does not want us to live with sadness with grief you see look at some people's face you can read their face and you will say in their heart there is enormous grief there is a heavy weight on them there is a great load upon them that is crushing them that is that is that they are carrying all the time and they have not recovered from the past but god wants you to recover from whatever you have been through and if you read in luke's gospel chapter number 4 and we read from verse 18 luke 4 18 onwards the spirit of the lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed to proclaim the year of the lord's favor and we read in verse 20 then he rolled up the scroll gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the bible says the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began by saying to them today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing when their eyes were fastened upon him he referred to the passage of scripture he read from isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 and 2 that's what he read we read in verse 18 and 19 jesus read the prophecy that was prophesied in isaiah 61 1 and 2 
and he read it when they gave him the scroll in the synagogue and as he finished reading it everybody's eyes were fixed on him and this is what jesus says today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing the good news has come jesus himself is the one who has brought the good news and he says it is talking about him the spirit of the lord is on me he's that scripture which was prophesied in isaiah 800 years before jesus was born is talking about jesus himself that he was anointed for what to preach the good news to the poor not just to the poor uh, you know who, those who are financially poor but this speaks about those who are spiritually poor those who do not have the spirit of god those who do not have the good news of the gospel those who are spiritually poor the good news of the gospel is preached and and then he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners to the recovery of the sight to the blind those who are spiritually blind who could not see the good news of the gospel who the devil the satan the ruler of this age the god of this age has blinded the eyes of the people that their eyes should be open jesus came for that he was anointed for that he came to release those who were oppressed to bring recovery if you see carefully the, the many things that it is spoken here to proclaim freedom for the prisoners the proclamation of freedom to the prisoners the word of god was fulfilled and what the freedom that is proclaimed to them will set them free jesus came that we will be set free the son of man came that we might be set free and when he proclaimed freedom they were set free from their sin they were set free from their bondage they were set free from their curses and uh, the recovery of the of the sight for the blind release the oppressed you see the everything that it's talking about is about recovering is about being set free to come out of what they have been in to get out of the prison to get out of the blindness to get out of oppression you see that jesus is anointed to set us free to help us recover hallelujah and what a privilege we have that same spirit of god that came upon jesus has come upon you and i we are filled with this holy spirit and by his power we can recover today hallelujah yes it is god who helps us but we have his holy spirit and the anointing to help us to recover and we are filled with the oil of joy hallelujah to turn our grief and our sorrow into joy we are filled with joy by the anointing of the oil of joy hallelujah the anointing produces joy amen that's what is the kingdom of god righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost is the kingdom of god righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit when the holy spirit comes there is joy there is no grief where the holy spirit is there there is no sadness when the holy spirit is there when you are a person who's filled with the holy spirit that's why it's so important that you and i are baptized in the holy spirit anointed by the holy spirit it's an experience that you and i need to receive and you can receive if you will ask the lord ask the lord to fill you with this holy spirit and he will give you the you know the initial evidence of speaking in tongues you need it you need it some people will be very theologically rational uh, rationalizing these things and say oh we already have the holy spirit when we born, got born again oh yes that is that is true in one sense that's a work of the holy spirit you read that in first corinthians chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2 where without the work of the holy spirit no one can confess that jesus is lord that is a work of the holy spirit that that helps us to know that jesus is lord to help us to know we have not seen jesus with our naked eyes but how do we know that jesus is god how do we recognize that god is real how do we believe in him it is by the work of the holy spirit the spirit of god gives us a revelation in our hearts in our spirit to recognize that jesus is lord that is the work of the holy spirit but after we got born again saved it is a secondary experience to receive the infilling the baptism of the holy spirit which is an empowerment to be a witness for the lord when you're filled with the holy spirit you'll be filled with great joy because our god is not a sad god amen he's a happy god hallelujah he fills us with joy in the presence of god there is joy that's what we meditated on last sunday now quickly how can we recover 
God wants you to recover from this for whatever it is whatever you want to call it you know God created um everything in the garden of eden and he created man and he asked adam and he and he watched what adam would name all of god's creations it was adam who named them it was adam he called it as lion it was adam he called it as a cat it was adam he called that as a you know as a donkey it was adam who named and he said he watched gee, god watched he wanted to see what would what adam would name in this morning what are you naming your problem what would you name what you have been through what do you see and whatever you see what do you name it what do you call it whatever you experiencing in your life what do you call it and whatever you call that will be changed hallelujah amen you will recover from whatever you call it let's quickly go into you know first chronicles chapter number 4 was 9 and 10 First Chronicles chapter 4 was 9 and 10 Read there about a man called Jabez Jabez was more honorable than his brothers His mother had named him Jabez saying I gave birth to him in pain Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, "Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain." And God granted his request. Now, Jabez is a Hebrew word for pain. So whenever people called him, they called him pain. "Hey pain, come here. Pain, what are you doing? Pain, come to eat." Pain Jabez was a Hebrew word for pain. They called him pain. And the mother and and it says that his mother gave birth to him in pain. Now tell me which mother does not give birth to a child without pain? Now of course with the advancement in technology if you want to give birth without pain you go to some other country where uh, you can find good Uh, injections and uh, treatments that can help you give birth without pain but that's that's the advancement of technology but pain is integral part of giving birth but why does it say so specifically that his mother gave birth to him in pain that obviously means that it is not talking about the physical pain that the mother went through in giving birth but there was something else that was causing much pain to her to a heart that even when she gave birth she gave birth to him her to him in pain that she did not have joy after she gave birth and goes on to say and jabez cried out to the god of israel now only the mother gave birth to him in pain but how did the child when he grew up how did he know that he was still living in pain there was something that was going on in his life obviously Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, "Oh that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me." And and he goes on to pray, "And keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain." He prays for two things specifically here. "Oh that you would bless me and enlarge my territory and keep me from harm so that I will be fr- free from pain." He gives a reason why he is going through pain. That there was some harm he he seemed to be lim- living in some very limited conditions with with some very limited resources and he says lord enlarge my territory which means there's something that is limiting his life something that is crushing something that's stopping something that's put him in us in a tight spot something that is locked him into a corner that he's he experiences pain in his life and he says oh that you would bless me and you will enlarge my territory and keep me from harm there was some harm that he was you know experiencing in his life something that was harming his life we do not know all the details about it but just about this one man there are only two verses in the whole bible but 
the bible says that when he cried out to god and said god deliver me from this pain god granted his request he just did not hear him but god granted his request hallelujah you know he was able to recover from what he was going through in his life something that was handed down from to him from his mother she was also experiencing that pain that heartache whatever it is we do not know and he was also experiencing it and god granted his request when he cried out to him hallelujah hallelujah you and i can recover from this the first thing that you and i need to recover is from whatever pain that you're going through i don't know what is your heartache what is your pain what is that thing that has been carrying on for generations that pain that sorrow that heaviness that burden a thing that has limited your life that thing that is crushing your heart a thing that does not give you the freedom and the happiness that you need that is that that does not you know help you to live with the joy a thing that is stopping you you can recover from that and god wants you to recover if you will just pray hallelujah would you cry out to god and say god help me to overcome this pain help me to recover from this pain whatever it has been for a long time it's been there for a long time there are some homes there are some families there are some people who experience pain in their life from generation to generation they live in grief and sorrow from generation to generation we've seen that they they have the same sadness the same grief the same disposition in their face the same kind of inferiority the same kind of smallness they feel about themselves the same kind of you know uh, uh, lack that they feel about themselves which their parents also felt which for which they also grieved for which they also cried you know we've seen some people in every wedding we go we go to they will sit and cry in one corner because they're complaining of their knee pain you know and then you know we see their daughter also is complaining of the knee pain and she is but thank god she is not crying but she looks a little sad we used to see them every wedding we go to every engagement ceremony everywhere you go you will see them crying and everybody will come there and my grandfather was very good at comforting you know that old grandma and he would comfort all the time and say don't worry oh he will listen to all the pain stories and i mean he was like a um, you know like a cushion i mean he was absorbing all that was you know thrown at him and and he would just receive it and feel sad for that grandma and then now her daughter also is having all the same knee pain and she's also grieving sometimes it gets handed over from generation you need to break that bondage hallelujah you need to recover from that hallelujah you might have less money you might have pain you might have difficulty you might feel crushed that you might you know your territory might be small your resources might be small it's the same kind of situation that you experience your parents experience your grandparents same thing but you can recover from that hallelujah hallelujah that same thing that does not need to happen in your life that same curse does, is canceled on the cross of calvary everything is nailed on the cross the bible says in colossians chapter 2 hallelujah all the curses have been done away with jesus became a curse for us on the cross and he has taken away all the curses and it don't come to us from generation to generation some people believe in generational curses and they believe that something you have to do something to break that curse you have to say some kind of recitations and you know uh, certain things no 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 it's already been canceled on the cross if you believe it you will receive it hallelujah Hallelujah it don't come upon your life once again amen hallelujah the bible says that that's, he will you know visit the sins of the forefathers to the third and the fourth generation but to those who keep his commandments he will show mercy to a thousand generations hallelujah if you love the lord in your generation if you serve the lord if you are faithful to the lord you walk by the word of god it will not affect you for a thousand generations they will be blessed hallelujah you can recover from that right now amen don't believe that because it was there this is always there upon us and it will continue to be there for us 
what to do this is what is written for us we don't believing in fate and if there is some good luck maybe some day something will get better no 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 we are not wishing for something to happen some day there's we anyway as a christian as a believer on the lord jesus we don't believe in neither fate nor in luck amen neither in fate nor in luck we believe in the will of god and we believe in in what we receive from the finished work of jesus on the cross hallelujah never go anywhere and say if i lucky i'll get a job if i lucky if i'm lucky i'll pass this exam no 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 if it is the will of god hallelujah praise god hallelujah so you can overcome if you pray prayer helps us to recover there is nothing to substitute prayer there is nothing else we can do other than to pray to recover hallelujah praise god god wants us to pray primarily the first thing to overcome to recover from pain is prayer you pray you get connected with god you will be filled with the joy of the lord and you will recover from pain second secondly quickly how to recover from sin guilt and punishment sin guilt and punishment are consecutive things they go in order sin produces guilt guilt leads to condemnation and sin incurs the wrath of god and the punishment of god how to overcome that second samuel let's quickly read chapter 12 second samuel chapter 12 this is just after david had sinned against uh batsheba and not only just uh, committed the sin of adultery but he also killed uh, her husband uriah in war he sent a letter through uriah himself to the commander in chief joab to put uriah in the front lines in the battle so that he will be easily killed because he were he had already taken batsheba uriah's wife to be his wife You see uh, one sin led to another sin sin of lust led to adultery the sin of adultery uh, led to uh, murder you know plotting evil and murder and even before the sin of lust was a sin of not doing the thing that he was supposed to do it was the bible says in chapter 11 if you read in verse 1 in the spring 11:1 at the time when kings go off to war david sent joab out with the king's men and the whole israelite army and david remained in jerusalem you see that at the time when kings were supposed to be out on war it was a season of war it was a time when they would go out on battle but he did not go when we do not do the things that we are supposed to do we will get into trouble there is there are things that we have to rightly do at every stage in life as any common natural human being what you have to do in life you do some people sit and wait for some revelation to come from heaven for them to do the natural things that any person with proper common sense will do we don't have to wait what do you have to do daily duties have to be done student who needs to study needs to study a person who needs to work who is at a working working will uh, working age an age where they need to come to work they need to start working a person who needs to get married at a time when normally people get married they need to get married a uh, people who need to couples who need who are married who need to have who normally will have children need to have children sometimes people abnormally control things which is not right which is not healthy when it is time i mean we understand when you wait for certain things to happen you're trying hard you're putting in your effort and you're waiting you're praying you're expecting you want things to happen that is good but there are some people who decide on themselves and say i am not going to do this i am going to get married only when i'm 45 years old <laughs> you know we are not going to have a baby for the next 5 years 10 years we are going to first earn our income we're going to get our house we're going to get our job we're going to get our car we're going to get our pussy cat everything and then only we will have children you know abnormally they take their lives and things that need to be done in their lives they take it in their hands and control them that's something we should not do how many of you understand what i'm saying in the right sense 
Amen. When things get delayed in your life, that's a different matter. God is in control. He will make things to come to pass. But when everything is fine and you need to be doing things, we need to be doing what we need to do. When that doesn't happen, it will lead us to sin. Idle mind is devil's workshop. It's not in the Bible, but it's a biblical principle. God does not want us to be idle. And he talks about even about work. But, you know, you find that in uh, the epistles when the apostle Paul writes, let no one be idle. He says, if a man does not work, let him not eat. If a man does not work, let him not eat. So what we need to do, we need to be doing. Now, he did not do that. And so he got into trouble. And when he fell into sin, this is what happened. Turn with me to chapter 12. Nathan comes and confronts him. The prophet comes and confronts him about the sin he has committed. And then David was convicted. And this is what happened in chapter 12 verse 13. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. When Nathan spoke to David, immediately David accepted his mistake. How do you recover from sin? How do you recover from guilt? How do you recover from punishment? How do you recover? You immediately confess your sin to the Lord and say, Lord, I have sinned against you. When you are convicted and the Holy Spirit will convict us, the Spirit of God will bring conviction about sin. Spirit of God will convict us about sin. Even before we commit a sin, the Spirit of God will prompt us not to commit this sin. And even if we deliberately sin, the Spirit of God will continue to persistently convict us about the sin we have committed. Maybe it's a wrong word we've spoken. Maybe it's a wrong thought we've had. Maybe it's a place that we shouldn't have, shouldn't have gone, we've gone. Maybe it's a thing that we should be doing, we have not been doing. The Spirit of God will convict us. Maybe we should be praying, we've not been praying. Maybe we should be witnessing, we've not been witnessing. Whatever it may be, anything in our life, the Spirit of God will convict us. And, and Nathan was a man anointed of the Holy Spirit, a prophet of God. God speaks to him, reveals to him about David's sin. And he comes and confronts. Immediately David repents. How do you recover from sin, guilt and punishment? By repentance. By repentance. He remained immediately accepting his sin. He did not argue. He did not uh, give excuses. He did not say, no, no, it was not my fault. It was actually you no know, Bathsheba's fault. He did not blame someone else. That's what Adam did. This woman you gave me, she only gave me the fruit to eat. And that's why I ate. He put the blame on her and she put the blame on the serpent. She said, that serpent only deceived me. But we can never blame anybody else for our faults. We have to be willing to take the blame on ourselves. People who are quick to take the blame and, and accept their faults will always find favor with God. He who hides his sin will not prosper. Proverbs 28, 13. But he who confesses and forsakes them will find mercy. So the one who accepts blame, and especially it is very difficult when somebody else blames us. Even if we know that we are wrong, it will be very, very difficult when someone tells you are wrong. It's very difficult to accept. Nathan came and confronted, but David willingly accepted. Hallelujah. When we accept our fault and, and see what he did, Nathan immediately replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. God forgives sin. Amen. God's grace was upon Nathan, uh, of, sorry, upon David. And he said, you are not going to die. Verse 14, but because by doing this you have made the enemies of the Lord show you utter contempt, the son born to you will die. Because the enemies, you know, of God have, have taken the upper hand at war because of your sin. So God said he will teach him a lesson. And he said, the son born to you will die. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child with that Uriah's wife had born to David, verse 15, and he became ill. Verse 16, David pleaded with God for the child. Sometimes sickness can be because of sin. Sometimes sickness can be because of sin. Verse 16, David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted and went into his house and spent the nights lying on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him to get him up from the ground, but he refused and he would not eat any food with them. He really, really repented. He went down to, on his knees. He fell on the ground. He fasted and he prayed. He did not eat. As a king, he did not look for his dignity. 
he did not think of what people will think about him he just humbled himself before god humbly submitting to god to say lord have mercy upon me have mercy upon me is so important repentance is so important on the seventh day the child died was 18 david servants were afraid to tell him that when the child was dead for they thought while the child was still living we spoke to david but he would not listen to us how can we tell him when the child is de- dead he may do something desperate servants were afraid to tell him verse 19 david noticed that his servants were whispering among themselves and he realized the child was dead he is the child dead he asked yes they replied he is dead david then got up from the ground after he had washed put on lotions and changed his clothes he went into the house of the lord and worshiped then he went to his own house at his request they served him food and he ate he recovered from the sin and the guilt hallelujah he recovered from the sin when he confessed his sin he recovered from his sin he asked god for forgiveness god didn't forgive him but he was going through the grief and he was pleading with god for the child but he recovered from the grief of the death of his child he got up and he said i will recover hallelujah hallelujah it's time that you recover from the loss of everything that you have lost things might have gone wrong even because of our sin if it is because of our sin we ask god for forgiveness but if you've lost something in your life if you've lost money you've lost a business you've lost a house you've lost a child you've lost a loved one you come before the presence of god he went into the house of god and he worshiped god there hallelujah he worshiped god there and he said lord you are good and his mercy endures forever hallelujah hallelujah he blessed the name of the lord he said i will bless the lord at all times his praise will continually be in my mouth we have no doubt to believe that he went into the house of god and he worshiped and praised and thanked god hallelujah he blessed the name of the lord he worshiped god and he recovered from his grief hallelujah amen brother sister you can recover from this amen and then you see god blessed him with another child and that was solomon hallelujah amen god made solomon to be king over israel there was no one as wise as solomon there was no one as wealthy and as popular as solomon that the kings and the nations of the world came to listen to solomon's wisdom they came to solomon and he built the temple of god hallelujah for the first time a temple was built by his son solomon god helped him to recover and blessed him with such an abundant blessing the latter blessing in your life will be greater than the former hallelujah the blessings will be greater and more glorious than the losses you have experienced hallelujah brother sister you can recover from this God wants you to recover from everything that you've lost the life that you lost the 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 loved ones you've lost the relationships that you lost whatever is a loss that you undergone you can recover hallelujah amen god's word says that he will restore the years that the locusts have eaten the bible is a book of restoration hallelujah the whole bible is a message of restoration Amen. The whole, the content of the message of the whole Bible is a message of reconciliation. Of people who have gone through the worst things in life and they have recovered. Sinners have recovered from their sin and their guilt and their shame. Jesus looked at the woman who was caught in adultery and he said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He has made a way for us to recover. He is a God of second chances. You can come to him once again this morning and you can recover. Hallelujah. from everything that you from the pain from the punishment that you experienced from the losses you've experienced not every loss is a punishment not everything you lose is necessarily a punishment but even because of a punishment if you've lost something god is able to help us recover from that hallelujah amen you repent and god will help you to recover you hold on to god you worship god you bless the name of the lord in the midst of your grief in the midst of all his grief he was grieving he was crying he was wailing he was praying he refused to eat but in the midst of utter great grief and distress he went and worshiped hallelujah hallelujah amen and you can recover praise god hallelujah amen praise god quickly third thing david was in distress first samuel chapter 30 when you, if you are in a very distressful situation 
you are di- totally distressed disappointed discouraged you do not know what to do you all your strength is gone you become weak you become frail you become you know unable to take any decision unable to think unable to do anything unable you know not able to you know realize or or come to terms with circumstances that ha- happening in your life in total distress first samuel chapter 30 read from verses 1 to 6 david and his men reached ziklag on the third day now the amalekites had raided the negev and ziklag they had attacked ziklag and burned it and had taken captive the women and all who were in it now david had gone out with his men leaving behind his wives and his children and uh, he had gone out on war to fight the philistines but when he came back he saw that his own home you know and his family and everybody his the people of his men the wives and the children all have been taken captive and at ziklag when they came back that's where he was and it was burned down and everybody was missing just imagine how it would be like to come back home and see everything missing you know uh, in some rare uh, occurrences even in our city we heard of stories where uh, when people have gone out of town you know uh, robbers have come with the a truck and absolutely unload you know uh, uh, you know loaded up the whole house stole away the whole house and gone away and they found their house totally empty and all the neighbors thought that these people are shifting their house <laughs> you know those kind of things happen really we we heard it many times you know it was like that everybody was everything was gone total distress he didn't know what to do and uh, when david and his men came to ziklag was 3 they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive captive so david and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep they wept aloud no strength left to weep what do we do what do we do where do we find what has happened to them what would they have done to them you know those are the kind of times when your imagination can re- run really wild and you begin to imagine all the worst things that could have happened and begin to ha- fear and fear and fear and they wept so much they had no strength even to weep have you gone through such times when you were so distressed where you had no strength even to stand up on your feet when you had no strength even to go out the next morning you had nothing in within you to say i can do it nothing to hope for no hope at all unable to even face anybody you know uh, unwilling to meet anyone unwilling to speak to anyone don't feel like talking to anybody don't feel like eating anything don't feel like meeting anybody distressed total distress at that situation see what happened verse 6 David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him now this is getting worse now he had lost everything his own wives and fa- ch- you know children and everybody and everything is burned down and all his men who followed him have also lost everything now already that is a absolutely distressing situation no strength now added fuel to fire his men are now thinking of stoning him why because because we followed you we also lost everything they are angry with him also now just imagine you lost everything everybody around also is turning against you ready to stone him each one was bitter was six in spirit because of his sons and daughter but david found strength in the lord his god hallelujah david found strength in the lord his god everyone was discouraged everyone was disappointed but if you will turn to god you will find strength in god hallelujah you will find strength you will find hope there can be real strength that can come into you when you are in total distress true strength real strength that can come into you where you will say i'm not going to be worried anymore i'm not going to be disturbed anymore the worst has already happened what else to be afraid of god will help me hallelujah you can stand strong and say god is going to help me you read in you know psalm 121 i will lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help comes from my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth hallelujah we can lift up our eyes and look at god 
turn to god in such distressing times when you do not know what to do when you do not know where to go when you have no one to help you turn to god and you will find strength in god you will find strength in god you will be able to overcome the distress circumstances may not change instantaneously but you can overcome the distress you can be strong and face it you can overcome it turn with me to isaiah chapter 40 let's read verses 28 to 31 isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 to 31 do you not know have you not heard the lord is the everlasting god the creator of the ends of the earth he will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall but those who hope in the lord will renew their strength those in king james version it will say those who wait upon the lord those who wait in the lord those who hope in the lord keep trusting god keep waiting on the lord wait in his presence and you will be renewed your strength will be renewed hallelujah hallelujah they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint amen hallelujah in distressing circumstances wait in the presence of the lord and you will find strength you can recover from distress you will find strength hallelujah ask the lord this morning lord i need new strength i need new, new strength the bible says in verse 28 there in second part he will not grow weary tired or weary he will not grow tired or weary our god is a god who is awake 24/7 and he is not tired he is not sleepy he is not worn out he is not heard all the cries and the pain and the suffering of all the people and he is not got depressed hallelujah amen if you listen to one person's depressing story you can get depressed but he hears the stories of all the people and he does not get depressed amen praise god hallelujah and so we can find strength from him he does not grow tired or weary amen though he the one the one who watches over israel neither sleeps nor slumbers amen he is watching over us to strengthen us friend brother sister find strength in god overcome your distress do not live in the distress god does not want you to live in it recover from it this morning find strength in the lord quickly number 4 you find in the life of nehemiah nehemiah's time you find that the walls of jerusalem were broken the city was demolished the the gates were burned down turn with me to nehemiah chapter number 1 and let's read verses 2 to 4 he hears about the news about how the walls have been broken down nehemiah chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 Hanani one of my brothers came from Judah with some other men and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile and also about Jerusalem you know he's questioning about the Jewish remnant the Jews have been taken captive to Babylon some people have been left behind now he's asking Hanani one of his brothers how is the situation there I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile and also about Jerusalem how is the city was three they said to me those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace the wall of jerusalem is broken down its gates have been burned with fire when i heard these things i sat down and wept for some days i mourned and fasted and prayed before the god of heaven but here we find he prayed he fasted he pleaded with god oh god this is how it is when you are broken you know this is the time where everything is broken down in brokenness he prayed but he did not just pray and stop there this is what he do he did when he went to the king now he was working in the king's palace as a cup bearer when he went for his job for his work next morning the king asked him why are you sad nehemiah and this is what nehemiah responded with in chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5 the king said to me what is it you want then i prayed to the god of heaven and i answered the king if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in his sight let him send me to the city in judah where my fathers are buried so that i can go and rebuild it hallelujah it's not just crying and praying but you also need to start rebuilding 
you need to if you need to recover from whatever you've been through you're not just only going to be praying and praying and crying and praying alone and that won't just be good enough prayer is important primarily but after you prayed you need to start rebuilding what can i do about it what can you do about it what step are you going to take to rebuild your life what decisions are you making what are you going to say what are you going to do where are you going to go how are you going to rebuild your life what are the initiatives that you're going to be taking yes your company went on loss yes you lost your job yes you failed an exam yes you lost a loved one yes your life is in shambles yes everything is messed up yes everything is gone down but what are you going to do to rebuild your life other than prayer next to prayer how are you going to rebuild he said he said oh lives are in disgrace everything is in bad shape but he said i'm going to go and rebuild who is nehemiah nehemiah is not a prophet nehemiah is not a king nehemiah is not a governor nehemiah did not receive an angel from heaven to tell him to rebuild hello are you hearing me he did not receive an angel from heaven to come and tell him to rebuild he prayed he said what can i do about this ask yourself this question what can i do about this situation what can i do about this person what can i do about my life what can i do about my family what should i do what can i do i'm going to rebuild hallelujah hallelujah if you have come to the point like nehemiah after much prayer and you cannot do this without prayer if you try to rebuild without prayer we will be only standing in defiance against god because we can throw our fist against god and say i will rebuild i will build my life no we cannot say that after prayer with the help of god with the gracious hand of god upon him having found favor in the eyes of the king also you see it has taken some time it has taken some work on his part what are you working on your part to build your life are you working on your part to build your family are you working on your part to build your career are you working on your part to build good relationships what are you doing are you just praying 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 alone that one may not be good enough we need to start rebuilding the gracious hand of the lord will be upon you and look at verse number in same chapter chapter 2 uh, nehemiah 2:18 i also told them uh, verse 17 then i said to them you see the trouble we are in jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire come let us rebuild the walls of jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace i also told them about the gracious hand of the lord upon me and what the king has said to me they replied let us start rebuilding so they began this good work god wants you to begin a good work you pray and begin a good work you pray and begin a good work you need to work things out you need to write things down get a notebook down and say what can i do you see sometimes when we only live in a state of thoughts nothing will materialize but when you want to try to write something that is when even your thoughts will come into alignment write something down or go talk to somebody tell someone what you are going to do talk to someone find some solution find some answer find some resources find some people find people who have been through some similar circumstances talk to them ask them what did you do how did you handle it how can you get out how can i recover that should be a constant question in your heart how can i recover from this how can i recover from this you got to pray and you got to start rebuilding you need to ask your next question how can i rebuild what can i do to build ask the question to yourself and find the answer god will lead you hallelujah god helped nehemiah to find favor because he was a man who said i want to rebuild because he said i want to rebuild there are some people who live with no decisions with no determination with no aspirations with no interest if we just live a blank life and say let whatever happens let it happen then nothing will happen no that's a that's not a right kind of resolve 
If you will resolve to say, I'm going to rebuild, I'm going to see my life rebuilt, I'm going to see my family rebuilt, I'm going to see my career rebuilt, I'm going to see my education rebuilt, I'm going to put my life, I'm going to get my life in order, I'm going to see my life happen well, go well. If you're determined, God will bless it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will help you find favor in the eyes of the king. Even the eyes of the king. Amen. Hallelujah. He will help you to find favor. He will cause you to rebuild. Everybody mocked and said, even if a fox walks over this wall, it will fall down. That's how they mocked. They ridiculed him. They threatened him. They did all kinds of opposition was there. But he was determined. He said, we will pray and we will rebuild. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You need to recover from this, from your brokenness, from your broken life. Hallelujah. And start rebuilding. Just prayer will not be enough. Pray and start rebuilding. Fifthly and the lastly, last point. How do you recover from rejection? This is a very hard thing to recover from rejection. You look at the life of Paul. One time while he had preached and everything in Lystra and Derbe, the miracles that happened in Acts chapter 14, you find. After the miracle happened, everybody came and garlanded Paul and Barnabas and, and uh, they said, oh, you're like the gods have come among us. They really worshipped them. They almost said, you're like gods. And Paul said, no, no, no. There's only one God. He did not accept the worship. But this uh, really, uh, you know, uh, disturbed the people there, the Jews and everybody were angry. And uh, verse 19 you read, Acts 14, 19. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. You know, they came there and won everybody. They, they spoke wrongly about Paul and they won them over to their side, some of the Jews. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city thinking he was dead. They stoned him. Can you survive being stoned? Stoned. Now, for some people, stone is a different meaning altogether these days. You know, this is being stoned and thrown out, imagining that he's dead. After he was thrown out as to be dead for a good work he did, for a miracle he did. Verse 20, after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back to the city. The next day he and Barnabas left for Derbe. After being stoned and thrown to be dead, he was rejected. He said, they said, don't come here. Thrown out, he got up and went back. What do you do? How do you recover when you're rejected? Get up and go. It's too unbelievable, un unbelievable for us. When you feel rejected, just get up and go. Amen. What it means is he just rubbed it off. He just rubbed it off. He didn't sit there and cry, Oh, everybody rejected me. Oh, you know, I did so much good. I did a healing. I brought a healing. I did a miracle. But now they are stoning me for a good thing. He didn't feel sad and cry about himself and how sad he was and how bad he felt. And he didn't go tell his disciples, all the disciples, you know, I did a miracle here. I did good to them. But see how they are stoning me. If we were that, that's what we would have said. See how bad these people are. But he just rubbed it off and got up and went. Yes, he was injured. But the point is about when he was thrown out, he got up, rubbed it off and went. It says he went back into the city. Which means he rubbed off the rejection. Are you with me this morning? Hallelujah. That's how we need to treat rejection. What do you do? Just get up and go. Rub it off and go. Rub it off and go. Let me show you a verse from Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7 and verse 21. Ecclesiastes 7, 21. Do not pay attention to every word people say. What does it say? Do not pay attention to every word people say. 
Sometimes you have to act like you're deaf. They will reject you, they will accuse you, they will falsely complain, they will say all kinds of things, all kinds of things. Do not pay attention to what? To every word. It doesn't say don't pay attention to people. It says do not pay attention to every word. You see, the, you need to read it very carefully. So don't say I'm not going to pay attention to anybody. <laughs> and don't stop listening in class. <laughs> and don't stop listening when your boss tells you what you have to do for the day. <laughs> don't pay attention to every word people say. Or you may hear your servant cursing you. So you know, they will curse you only. But ignore it. Do not pay attention to it. Rub it off. Amen? How do you recover from rejection? Rub it off. Get away from it. Hallelujah. Ignore it. That's how you can recover from rejection. He was thrown out, but he recovered. Instantaneously, they thought he was dead. People will think you are dead, you are gone, you are finished. They can finish you off with their tongue, with their big mouth, but you can recover from it. Hallelujah. You just act like as if nothing happened. You just act like you never got rejected. You act like as if it didn't hurt you at all. It didn't make sense at all. You don't pay attention to it. You don't give importance to it. What will they do after that? Amen? Hallelujah! You can recover from rejection so easily. You can recover. Even Jesus himself taught us that lesson in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Jesus talks about it. Matthew chapter 10. But this is in the context of those who don't accept the gospel. Matthew chapter 10. But there's a principle there. Verse 11 onwards, when you enter a town or a village, search for some worthy person, a man of peace, stay there in his house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it and, it is, and if it is not, let your pre peace return to you. Verse 14, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. You can't go begging after people and say, please accept me, please accept me, please accept what I am saying. Please understand, please let me explain to you. People will not be willing to do that. To accept also, they will not be willing to listen also. Jesus says, just dust your feet off, leave, the, leave that home, leave that town. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what Jacob did when Laban changed his wages ten times. He kept punishing him kept doing all kinds of things against him. He just left. He got up and left. Hallelujah. If you are rejected, just get up, rub it off and leave it. Amen.